Hey there everyone, Vaish here, back again. Oh goodness. Okay, seems like I need a new haircut, but I'm not ready for it, so bear with me. Hey there everyone, Vaish here, back again with another video, and in this video, this is actually a second attempt to record the video. The initial version was just to give you a brief overview about the fleet, which is a new code editor by the classic JetBrains, the pioneers in making the IDEs. But when one, uh, once I recorded this video about the fleet, I realized this was just the basic and I, and I tried to explore a bit more offering about the JetBrains and boy oh boy, it blew my mind. Now the entire race is now not about having the code editor or the best code editor. The race is about who is going to move all the developers in their cloud so that developers can do everything in the cloud, in the company's cloud. And JetBrains is not the only one in the race. There are a couple of more, so I'll talk about them in the later on videos. This video, I want to focus about what are the JetBrains offering. And by the way, this video is not sponsored at all. This is something I found as a regular analysis that I did just recently on the JetBrains and the fleet. So without a further ado, let me bring you on to my desktop and let's talk about what are the offerings. And we have we will have surely a little bit descriptions and details about the fleet, which is a new challenger for the throne of the VS Code. But let's go ahead and check it out. And before we go there, let me clearly tell you this, that all those people, there are a lot of videos around the YouTube which says, now that the VS Code is going to be dethroned by the fleet, the new editor by the JetBrains. But I think this is too early to say. And yes, of course, you should keep an eye on what fleet is doing, how the progress is being made, because this was also a case earlier in the time when Atom was there or Sublime Text was there. And eventually over the time, a VS Code took over the throne. But this might be the case. This might not be the case. This is too early to say. This product is not yet released publicly available in the market. It's just a public beta right now. Even there are no plugins right now and which are the heart and meat of every single editor. VS Code without the plugin is just meh. And same thing is happening for the fleet as well. Eventually, as fleet opens up more uh, ability to the developers so that they can bring in more plugins, or maybe the ability to import all the plugins from the VS Code environment into this one, We'll see how that floats around. But right now, let's go ahead and take a look on the fleet first so that you can have a little bit of idea about what I found out, my thoughts around it, and maybe you can also take a decision on that. All right, so moving up onto the computer, the first thing that you're going to notice is this is how I search for JetBla JetBrains uh, fleet. And uh, a lot of people might be complaining the way how JetBrains fleet is being downloaded because it's not something like you can click on it and the download will start. It will actually take you to download the entire Toolbox app. Now, Toolbox is really simple. It just is the JetBrains. They make like crazy lot of softwares and especially the IDEs. And this is the way how they allow you to download their application. There is a whole list of it, just like in the Adobe Creative Cloud of Suite. And you can just pick your software, which one you want to install, which version you want to install, which is really important for the organization because they don't want to jump into the newer and the latest version. There might be some bugs, there might be some crashes. So once the things are vetted out and tested out, then only they want to move into different versions. So obviously JetBrains knows this. They have been handling the organization for like longest as I know. So you download it. Once you install it, really simple install for anyone. Then you simply go up at the top and this is the toolbox that they give you. So JetBrains has a lot of products. IntelliJ, uh, Android Studio, of course, we all know about it. WebStrom, uh, PHPStrom. <laughs> there's, a, there's a lot of them available here. Now, obviously, you'll just go directly into the fleet and you'll install that. First, we'll talk about that and then I'll walk you through that what made me so exciting and where it, this is all going ahead in the market. So let me just go ahead and minimize this. We'll talk about this later on. And let me just fire up the fleet. So this is the fleet app. And this will take probably just a second. And right now this is obviously super fast. And this is not impressive to me. Any software which comes out, eventually this, like in the first go, this is super, super fast. VS Code also was super fast at one point of time, but eventually the bloatware happened, a lot of plugins happened, a lot of continuous development happened. During that time, it was not able to keep up with that, and this is what happened to the VS Code. It's not the fastest one right now, but it is good enough. What I did is I opened up a React project, so this is my React basic dummy project, and I just drag and dropped it, and this is what it opens up directly out of the box. So this is what we see. And this is the basic first look. Let me go ahead and expand this up so we can have a full real estate on the screen. 
I really like the clean and the minimalistic look of it. Uh, really simple. The keyboard shortcuts, the keyboard bindings are really nice. You can have a command one on and off. You can have command two on and off. So I can just play around with the keyboard. The keyboard binding is really, really uh, impressive on the very first go. If you're working on, let's just say app.js, so you open up the source and uh, you can just go ahead and say, I wanna work on app.js. And suddenly you want to jump into the terminal. All you have to do is press command two and you are into your terminal. You want to hide the terminal, press it one more time and it hides up. So that is really nice. By the way, these bindings are also available at the top. So this is the first thing I notice because obviously I have to work a lot in the terminal. I also like that it picked up the default font, which was available in my system, and it was all up here. Now, this is something which I'm not impressed about, because let's just say I want more of the indentation up here. Uh, I have to go ahead and manually do with this. Maybe for some reason, I want this indentation to be on the left of navigation bar. I cannot do it in the default mode. It brings it up onto the next lines. So obviously, some default settings needs to be changed. Nothing that I'm complaining. I'm not nitpicking here. Uh, this is something really basics up here. Okay, let's go ahead and open up uh, the settings so we can go into the fleet and preferences. And this is where you can change a lot of things. Uh, so fleet uh, codes and everything. Themes, obviously, since it's not open for the developers, there is not much. I'm pretty sure eventually more is going to be available for you. So nothing to be worried about the fonts and the themes. They all are fine. And you'll obviously jump into terminal. It by default gives you the font size, line height, what is the font that you want to use it. I really like it. This is the first thing I checked out. Also, what's impressive about the fleet is how the Git and Git history is being mentioned. This is super important for me as I push a lot of code to the Git. So having this access and a quick access to the history and everything, uh, this is something really, really amazing. Now, also, you'll notice that on the right side, there is this small icon, which is a smart mode. So you can go ahead and disable this. And this will not give you any kind of unwanted suggestions. A lot of people don't like it. I have noticed recently while working with different teams that some people don't like these suggestions. They are like Vim style of code ed, code writers. And once you enable that, it analyzes all of your code and give you suggestion based on your particular code, not just all the React applications that possibly could be the suggestion, but based on what you are building your application and maybe you have designed some functions. So in other files, you want a suggestion of these functions. This is really nice. I like that. And uh, this took really didn't took much. I tried it with a couple of big projects as well, which I cannot show obviously here, but didn't took much. So this is the basics. Now, obviously there is a lot more you can go ahead and work on with that. You can go ahead and check out the settings and uh, all of these things. So there's a lot here. Now also you can go ahead and check out the code, refactor parts, completion. So obviously it's JetBrains. They, they actually pioneer these things. So this is the basics of it. So a uh, couple of more things, let me show you that. Yeah, it's actually in the view and you have to click on tools. Command T is the shortcut for this one. So there is a lot of go to where you want to jump into the files, action. So I'm pretty sure this is the shortcut. If I'll be using fleet for longer run, I'll keep this shortcut in mind. So command T is for me, control T probably is gonna be for you. And you can go ahead and take a lot of actions about it. Just like in the VS code, we have command shift P for opening the command palette. It's command T. Uh, so there's a lot that you can go ahead and do here. There's also a lot of tools that you can directly go ahead and use that search text. You can hide these bindings as well. I like them here. It will help me to memorize a few of them. Okay. All right. So this is the basics. Again, there is not too much to explore about the fleet. Yes, it's lightweight. There is no plugin as of now, but this is the first look. This is how it looks. But what caught my attention and why I removed the last video was because where this is all going on. This is all going into the cloud. So now the future is obviously, you know, it's a remote working. Everybody eventually is going to be remote working. And already majority of people are working remotely. In that situation, there is a lot of communication gap. What thing you want to do and what files you're working on and what you should be working on next. And if there is some problem or bug, which new fresher in your company might be facing, there is usually an internal documentation of the company, kind of an internal blog where somebody can read about it maybe uh, learn about the APIs, how to handle that, what is the recommendation about the company. So this communication is not so easy in the remote work and development. This is where JetBrains shines a lot. So you can notice this one here, which says start a session. I clicked on this and it says, hey, we have uh, copied the session, but how you'd like to join? There is also a link to join the session and I can join the session. This will bring you to the spaces. Now this is a killer thing about the JetBrains. So I opened it up 
And this is the desktop spaces, but this is not where it actually is something where you will get impressed about it. So let me walk you through. So let me open up my uh, Google Chrome and let's go ahead and talk about these spaces. And this is something where things are gonna be loving. <laughs> I'll, I'll absolute, I'm loving it. I'm pretty sure you'll also love it. So this is your dashboard. This is something where everything happens. So let me go ahead and open up and show you what JetBrains is trying to do with the spaces. This is something amazing. So space is a complete, uh, I have gone through with this, so I should open this up into a, a incognito mode. All right. So space is a complete software development platform. And this is a big statement already. So what they're saying that now you don't have to do anything on the premises on your system. You can have your Git hosting, code review, CICD pipeline, package management, even what version of IDs you're using, what plugins are recommended by the companies and the cloud dev environment. You can have your production, maybe whatever, wherever you like, but you can have the dev environment directly up here. Awesome, Get documentation, file storage, issue chats. Like I was like, come on, can you give me this much of the things? And when obviously this much is coming up, I'll be looking up at the pricing and the pricing is crazy. It says, hey, it's free. Uh, free for a lot of searchable messages, a lot of application, 2000 computation credits per month, which I think is a good enough deal. And then on top of that, this is uh, $8 per active. For companies, this is nothing. This is nothing. And you can build 20 applications, there's a lot. So obviously this is impressive uh, as an organization. There is obviously a debate. Can you use it? Can you not use it? But I tried it. I tried it out and I saw that. Let's go ahead and see this out. So in the spaces, uh, here is all the spaces. Now notice here, this is where the administration happens. So I can go ahead and put up my basic members who can actually join as a team member, my remote developers. I can design a team according to that. This will be working on X feature, Y features. I can even uh, have the locations and what equipment you are using. Uh, there's a lot of things I can even, the most important part, impressive part is the dev environment. I can just go ahead and work on the dev environment and specify that this is the ID we recommend. And that's the reason why fleet came into the picture. It's in the first go, you can see that this was not meant to be a competitor of VS Code, but rather their own cloud IDE, which is lightweight and can be loved by everyone. This is where I think it is going, but again, and you can have your roles, restriction, SSL keys, you can have your webhooks and whatnot. This all can be done via the administration support. Now, what's interesting is there are a lot of projects that you can go ahead and make. I made a project about YouTube, so your people can work on this one. It will also create, you can create a new repositories and stuff. You can have your chats with your teammate, like what you're working on. You can also have a to-do list for the people that which one is going to be the chat uh, feature you'll be working on. You can mark that feature who will be working on that. So this is really nice. Also something a little bit crazy is a blog. You can write your internal blog about it and just everything just here. Everything is just here. So this is something and you can just click on more and there are more like you can have your my profile. Can we can even have calendars, documentation, reviews, dev environment, extensions, like, oh goodness, this is, and notice here, you can even have a full-fledged calendar, which is the task, so no need of Jira or anything like that. And uh, on top of that, there is a document. Maybe you want to some, give somebody uh, your entire documentation about APIs, go ahead and do it. There's also a code reviews, <laughs> like in built. You can raise the issues, ask the developer to rewrite some fragments and and you might be thinking that, hey, Tesh, you are too excited about this. Yes, I am, because I know this is how eventually all the companies are going to go ahead and will create the future of the remote work and remote development. And this is not the only company. I know one more company which is also ahead and actually a little bit ahead in this direction. And I'll surely talk about that in the next video. If you want me to talk about them, they are also big giants and are silently working on that. I'll also talk about them in the next video. If you want me, let me know in the comment section. So this is a brief uh, kind of a, my verdicts, my commentary about what is happening and how the remote work and the development is changing. And the final statement would be, no, Fleet was not designed to dethrone VS Code or even to compete with that. This is all internal strategy as far as I can guess by the JetBrains, but I'll surely ping up some of my friends at JetBrains. And let's see how they are headed up and how this is gonna show up. That's it for this video. Hit that subscribe button and I'll catch you up in the next one.